Hi there, this is Crystal Blue, and I'm back to do the extended part of the position card number three, Dance Celebration. So, as with the other uh, involved readings, I've kind of wondered uh, just how I'll go ahead and execute this part of the reading. This is the last part of the Earth is Magical reading number four. Position card number three is, as I said, dance celebration. So you may ask, well, what's there to dance and celebrate about when, you know, people are dying and animals are dying and um, life as we know it has become extremely challenging. These are the times when you need to remind yourself to find the joy and remember what it means to live. And because if you do get caught up in that way of thinking, it's a downward spiral, okay? And that's where the dark force wants you to get caught up in, okay? But we want you Spirit wants you to be part of the spiral of life, okay? And the pine cone reminds us of this, right? If you study the pine cone in nature and other uh, forms of life, the life force in nature are, you know, it's about sacred geometry. So it isn't just about geometry that we learned about in school, right, in college. So I, I did a, a reading. It's called The Faith of the Seven. And um, you'll want to listen to that as well because I talk about the fee spiral. And um, in some of my other readings, I'm bringing in sacred geometry more into my discussions and I'm also involving sacred geometry of course into my grids so I encourage you to contact me about um, uh, booking a session about learning which crystals may help you along with the sacred geometry because we don't realize this but you know nature is full of geometric shapes, okay? And the pine cone, there's a, uh, I didn't realize this either until I took um, some fascinating science classes at the University of, of Maryland and University of California, Davis. Um, but pine cones, there are male and female pine cones too, right? So in order to birth new life, we need the masculine and the feminine. You can't birth life and, and nature, right, without both. But this uh, issue of sex and sexuality and the womb, the targeting of the womb, which I speak from experience on that. I've been on both sides of that where, you know, celebrated many Mother's Days uh, with great joy, but then after 9-11, no, that didn't happen. So we have to look at what was the purpose behind 9-11, and that was essentially and continues to be to distort what it means to be a human being on this planet um, and not just, it wasn't about chasing a man around in the desert um, or out of mountain caves, okay? Um, there's a lot more going on that people realize and then more than what has been told. So uh, we do know that war is a racket and we need do you know that myth is being used to ensure that war proliferates and that war is used and, and weapons formed against people succeed over, over the evolution of uh, family lineages, okay? 
So remember when I said in other parts of this Earth is Magical reading number four, I'm here to remind you as an environmental scientist just how magical the Earth is. The Earth is your home planet. It is your only home in the Milky Way at this point in time. <laughs> so you want to take good care of your planet. You don't want to uh, allow millions of billions and trillions of dollars of tax revenue to be used and abused to annihilate life and our planet. So you can see why Spirit continues to guide me to talk about these things over and over again and in different creative ways because there are many ways to get a message across but it's still the message remains the same. The song remains the same. Okay, there are those on this planet who are ne'er-do-wells, that I call them, and I'm calling them out, and I'm calling them out with truth because they're using myth and lies to manipulate and control the masses. And once they get control of your mind, they'll also have control of your heart and ultimately your soul. And that is just where Satan is waiting to take over God's children mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, as well as, you know, the physical body. Once, once, once Satan gets control of a, you know, a certain amount, in my estimation, of uh, life on this planet, you know, body by body, mind by mind, then, you know, it's over for us as a species. And we can see this happening with our animals. So that's why I encourage you to hashtag help animals too. And that's why I've developed a quiz. It's a fun quiz. And what's even funner about it is that the money, the proceeds, uh, that are gained from this um, through my business, New World Communications, LLC, is going to go to help more and more animals on our planet who deserve to live just as we do and just as our children do who are also being targeted by the dark side. Okay, so I mentioned the Three of Roses and the Two of Roses two three or three two and this was these numbers were the pivot points uh, in my life around 9 11 and um, i'm not going to say exactly how but basically by that point two three and three two um, i was flipping things um, essentially i was part of, i was reverse engineering some of this doom and I didn't know it, and that's when I realized, um, you know, that something major was not right around 9-11 and thereafter, and I was spot on. But what I didn't know was that I was supporting a lot of ne'er-do-wells that were part of the lie and the, and the myth, okay? And so I've already posted information that you can... Um, peruse for position card number three, including the information about uh, fear and fantasy uh, that Susan Faludi was spot on about. Uh, I think she wrote, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what date she wrote fear and fantasy um, about 9-11, but obviously it was, you know, after 9-11. 2001. She also wrote a book about um, the war on women and essentially the womb, which is what I learned post 9-11. And that book she wrote uh, was published in 1991, which is exactly, exactly the year that I was suspecting something uh, not right when I was 
at a military base making beautiful vases for my home in Maryland um, as a young mother with a young son. And I heard uh, something on the radio that disturbed me, and um, rightly so, hindsight 2020. So um, I'm going to show you the position. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you position card number three in just a minute. But I wanted to show you this um, loving elementals card, which is the three of roses. And in the introduction to this position card number three, I talked about the two of roses, two, three, three, two. And um, also the number four is significant as you uh, will learn by perusing the other video links that I have already posted uh, in correlation with that introduction to uh, card number three or card three, which is uh, dance celebration. So the gist of this is that, you know, we're evolving on our planet. And so it wasn't it wasn't um, abnormal for me to be concerned all the way back, even in the early 1990s as a young mom, um, not knowing um, what I was supporting was actually pretty dark and, and disturbing. And, you know, it took me quite a while to realize that um, in full detail. But um, as I said, you know, it was a learning curve for me that I went through for a reason and um, to address the cause and effect issues that um, need to be addressed um, in an outside uh, courts of law as well. So let's see. Uh, Spirit wanted me to go ahead and talk about the angels initially, but I do want to make sure that I show the card number that I just spoke about, which is Dance Celebration. There isn't a number on it, but this is the position card number three that I'm talking about. And this is from the Earth Magic deck, Dance Celebration. And I talked about uh, in the introduction for this card, her attire, she's wearing, you know, a tribal outfit that expresses helps her express who she was created to be um, and she you can tell she's full of spirit and individuation individuality uh, she's celebrating what comes naturally to her in this natural setting um, which is more like a you know looks like a desert environment but I am talking about environment. I'm talking about environmental justice, and I'm also talking about nature. And you'll see where spirit's taking me and you with this. And you can see the blue butterfly, which is another indicator of transformation. Essentially, that's what we're working toward on our planet is transformation from um, 2D and 3D beings into 4D, 5D, 6D, and higher, which is what um, what other civilizations have been able to do until uh, they got to a certain point where technology was misused. Um, there were other dark things going on as well. And so it's not coincidental that we're at this point again, and we're, we're at this um, juncture or fork in the road, if you will. Um, and I call it separating the wheat from the chaff because that gets back to biblical uh, terminology as well, because this is, we're in biblical times, but we're also in pivotal times where we're ascending, those, those who choose to ascend will, so this is like the stairway to heaven, 
and this is another card that I had out for a little while so spirit some of these additional cards that I show you as I've mentioned in other videos are talking about I'm talking about this as I show them to just kind of enhance and also um, enunciate if you will um, the me the message or the the words that you can um, key into and I mentioned at the toward the end of the introduction for the dance card the dance celebration that um, there were several charms that came out of, of this uh, little charm bowl that um, I also draw messages from, right? And um, two of the charms are keys, and I, I want to show this too, right? So here's the port, here's the um, the front cover of one of the decks that I used for this Earth is Magical reading number four and also other Earth is Magical readings. But obviously this is a portal, we're, refle we're still in this reflection, but we're shifting. This is part of the great shift toward uh, evolvement and um, this evolutionary jump, which they don't teach in historical geology, um, and they don't really teach it in um, Sunday school either. So uh, the key, here is one of the keys. I wanted to show this charm. So this is a key, right? So spirit, for those who are in, interested in continuing to ascend, um, I'm being guided to help help people do this. And um, ascending is essentially uh, realizing that uh, we have to overcome these veils of illusion, which I talked about in relation to the fog veiled card which was position card number one. So make sure you watch that. I know I'm going through this pretty quickly, but these cards um, are the, it's called the Ascension Deck, Accelerate Your Journey to the Light, and you can see this triangle, two triangles. And I talked about the misuse of the triangle, right? Because the triangle in, in, um, ancient times was used as a level or a balance, right? And you can see this um, through relics that anthropologists and archaeologists have found um, from ancient dig sites. And um, so we know that the triangle has been used you know, on the dollar bill, it's uh, the United States dollar bill as well as um, uh, symbols for specific nations um, with the upside down triangle and a right side up triangle. There's triangles that um, comprise the symbology of the Star of David, but we also know that that symbology has been misused. There's a lot of sim symbols that have been misused. So in this particular case, I'm showing this card to show the illumination of the triangle in relation to ascension um, above, right? This is pointing up to the heavens. There's a star right there. I also happened to pull before I started position card number three's reading, I happened to pull out what just, you know, in my dish, I one day I just reached over and saw what came out and a star came out, okay? So this message is about ascension, um, about learning what key things uh, need to be realized so that you too can ascend, right? 
So you see the star there, and you see the star here, where my index finger is. Okay, and the other key that I want to show you too, which is in correlation with this nature card, is um, from the uh, Atlantis cards. This is from uh, Diana Cooper's Atlantis cards deck. Is uh, So I said two keys, right? I talked about two keys, two charms at the end of the um, introduction. And um, this one has like a little, little sprout, right? I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So it's like little buds or little leaves are sprouting and this pretty much mirrors what is happening on my windowsill and also out in the yard as new buds and, and new life appears on the rose bushes and um, in the ground as bulbs start to show their foliage. So I'm talking about new life, right? And um, that's what these keys represent. The new, new life. It's a new world, a new earth. And there's, this one looks like a little tulip. If you can see that. And right to the angel there is illuminating it. Um, and the other thing I wanted to show you too is the heads or the tops of the keys. This one reminds me a little bit of Jupiter. Um, or, well, not so much Jupiter, the energy of Jupiter, but also in tarot, the hanged man. Uh, and that also correlates back to you know, the position of the legs uh, of the hanged man. If you look in tarot, the hanged man has the it's like the upside down man with his uh, leg, one leg up to his knee and the other leg is straight. And um, if you watch the Ancient Aliens series, that actually is a position that is shown in correlation to one of the tribes. And I forget which one that is. but. I know I'm talking pretty quickly, but if you do watch the Ancient Alien series, you'll probably come across it. it was one of the in one of the earlier um, s segments of uh, the Ancient Alien series. Uh, I don't think it was the Dogon, but I could be wrong about that. But obviously, um, there are other worldly entities that are. Um, influencing us on our planet uh, and you know some are good and some are not good and so I'm talking about the influential um, uh, ancients that used to uh, inhabit this planet and who are actually part of guide guiding uh, star seeds, indigo children, crystal children, rainbow children, and, and other evolved beings on our planet to ensure that our planet does not meet the same demise that other planets surely have and that other civilizations uh, have, including uh, the mythical Atlantis and Lemuria, which I also talked about in the introduction. So I just wanted to make sure that I talked about these charms right out of the gate, and I wanted to show you this star. So, you know, there are star seeds on this planet, and um, people are learning more and more about them uh, as uh, as human beings living in 3D lives and realizing there's more to life than just 3D. 
Um, I also showed these charms in the beginning. And also in the beginning parts of this uh, overarching uh, reading number four, but also in the introduction for this position card number three. I, sh oops, I showed you. I showed you the animal paw print and um, reminding people that you know we need to revere life and respect animals because they help bring balance. They balance the energy on our planet, believe it or not. But we can see those who are imbalanced in their mental state are harming animals. And that's because they don't jive. Their energy doesn't resonate with the animals and they see animals as evil. And I've even uh, witnessed this in my own personal life with those who are actually possessed uh, by the dark side and they see animals as having red eyes and you know being the evil ones. It's not the animals. The animals are resonant with nature, right? Because they're part of nature. But man who's become obsessed and possessed is not resonant with nature and they also happen to be the ones I've learned that are involved with essentially wanting to annihilate people and the planet. So you can't blame it on the animals and you can't blame COVID on the animals and you can't blame the monkeys. You know, it's time for man to evolve. And I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. And that's where we, we will have more peace on our planet when that happens. And so there's the peace sign. It was slipping off my palm this for this particular reading. So spirit wants me to say, you know, it's a slippery time right now because people are slipping back into the habituations of the past. And I wrote a book about this and my book got blocked and it, it got blocked because I was around those who are not resonant with nature and uh, were not resonant with me as an environmental scientist, even though they had been for years and then you know, the agenda on the planet changed and, and you know, things escalated and ramped up around 9-11 and thereafter, you know, so what was, what was it that caused this change? And it's not, it's not the mother, it's not the womb, it's not the child, it's not the animals, that's the problem. Okay, so it takes grace to work through this as I've had to uh, do myself in my own personal and professional life. But, um, you know, I'm here to remind people that the problem isn't nature and the problem isn't the animals, okay? And, um, and music reminds us of this, like I had mentioned in relation to my childhood. I listened to music as a child and I was getting good uh, guidance from a lot of that good music, but we can see where music has even been infiltrated. The music industry, like religions, have been infiltrated to promote misogyny and, you know, domination of the feminine and, and that gets back to the domination of nature because nature is innocent, all right, and children are innocent. You know, nature just is. And I, I showed uh, in some of the uh, preceding parts of Earth is Magical Reading number four, the card with the zebra on it. And the zebra, I compared the zebra to those who, you know, were identity thieving uh, in my life as well as this has happened to many people. So why is it that we have identity theft? And why is it that people, some people need, they're not comfortable in their own skin and so they need to attack and steal others' identity and, you know, move around on terra firma as if that's normal and actually intelligent to do instead of growing 
and evolving and maturing from within emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Okay, we will never have peace if we have identity theft and and domination over nature and nurture. Okay, it's just not going to happen. And you can surely bet that civilizations of the past have fallen not only because of high-tech problems, but also because of emotional problems. And so music reminds us to be emotionally uh, present, right? Um, and anyone, I had that reversed, anyone who knows um, the value of music knows that it's also a ma mathematical expression. People that are um, people that are musicians are also um, helping uh, evolve the planet in you know mathematical ways, and and so is nature. Nature is mathematical. Um, sacred geometry is an example of of math. All right, as is astronomy and astrology. So you know, if you become if you become so materialistic and you don't value nature and the animal paw, right, and and you denigrate people through music, especially women with the misogyny in a lot of the music since the nineties. Um, I mean, if you listen to music from the 70s and 60s, they weren't berating women like they have since. And, you know, so obviously what I'm saying is there's math behind this. So it's not just about controlling, uh, it's not just about engineering a planet, you know, for industrial purposes. It's about engineering planet a planet that supports life rather than controls the planet. And um, I worked on a NASA program uh, back in the 90s called Mission to Planet Earth. But, and that program rivaled the space station for funding back then. But then, you know, it's obvious to me uh, after leaving NASA in the 19, late 1990s and and moving to California and um, commencing a science uh, background in water management, water resource resources management, that the mission to planet Earth mission has even been uh, manipulated. The data is being manipulated so that they can control Earth as a system, almost like a computer system. And so people are, you know, know more about HARP H A A R P now than ever before, as well as the geoengineering of the weather. So, you know, this isn't smart. Uh, learning about our planet to dominate our planet and life on our planet is only going to bring uh, demise to our planet and the beings on our planet. And we can see where that has taken a serious, drastic turn in just under 20 years. So I was going to mention again, my animal quiz. If you contact me at my website, science, spirituality, universe, city dot info and request the animal quiz, I can send one to you by surface mail or um, I can provide you with a private link um, to access it. Okay. So, um, or, you know, a private file, I'll say. So let me know if you're interested in donating a five, $5 minimum donation. And I'm already helping animals uh, with my own money as well. So I'd be glad to uh, join your donations and contributions in with mine and uh, help more animals on our planet. And I ask you to step in too and ensure 
that if you see abuse in your city, in your community toward an animal or animals, including at the animal control facilities, where many of them are being actually neutered or spayed so the veterinarians can make money, and then they're being put to sleep. So please step in and stop the, these uh, malefic practices for profit. I call it profit from peril or profit by peril. Hashtag profit x peril. And, um, you know, uh, people have been seen on city streets yanking the leashes of their animal companions so hard that they toss the animals around. I've talked about many different types of abuse that can be attributed back to uh, war scenarios that I'm not going to talk about in this video. But what we show on TV and on social media in the forms of abuse that are being promoted actually and um, encouraged state by state, hashtag state by state, are, are not just either. And this is all part of the environmental justice hashtag that I also promote. So we need to get back to a more balanced way of thinking and emoting on our planet so that we have a safer planet and safer communities and home life. Okay, because what you teach your children will get passed down and we don't want to pass this abusive uh, cycle, these cycles of abuse anymore. It needs to stop. So I'm shuffling these cards in front of you at this point. These are the Atlantis cards and um, I did a pre-shuffle and so I'm going to see if any of the pre-shuffle cards do appear. But Diana Cooper's Atlantis cards are pretty phenomenal and um, they correlate also with her Ascension deck. So I'm going to move across here like this. I'm going to talk about these Ascension card deck or Ascension cards from the same deck as well as the Angels of Atlantis, Moonology cards, the Earth Magic card. Um, I read already, I've, I've read each of them, but I'll go through them one more time. And I'll talk about the Earth Star Chakra, which is one of my little cards that I pull to ask Spirit which chakra people can start working with. And this is what came out, the Earth Star Chakra. And you can see again, there's another star. Okay. So... Put that right there. And spirit, please give me one or two of these Atlantis cards to segue into the discussion of each of the Angels of Atlantis cards and angels that are coming through in position card number one, two, and three for this Earth is Magical reading number four. So we have one, two, three, four again. These readings are pretty fun and this to me is a little bit lighter than um, you'll notice for position card number one I have four, I think four links and that's because there, I was covering a lot of information just for that card, uh, position card number one, which is Fog Veiled, which has to do with, as I said, the veils of illusion, right? And um, ascending beyond the lies and the myth that we've been taught as part of our quote-unquote public education. I'll also be briefly talking about the age of Aquarius, which we're um, entering into even more so than we were uh, in earlier decades. 
you can see why the wars have proliferated because you know I've heard different things about when the age of Aquarius started whoa but um, we can see that or we can begin to recognize that it's not coincidental that the um, ramping up of war after war after war has coincided with this age of Aquarius shift that has been trying to happen and I have even said in my re earlier readings that I noticed this of course as a kid you know with the movie or actually the stage performance of Hair right and they talked about um, well they did a, perf a, a pretty popular performance and there was a song in there called, you know, let the sun shine in, uh, the sun shine in, and the age of Aquarius, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius is some of the first lyrics in that music, okay? So, um, it's obvious to me in hindsight that these wars that have been perpetuated over the last hundred years have essentially been uh, facilitated as I suspected um, not for good reasons and it's becoming more obvious to me it's to offset any any ability on our part as uh, the human race to evolve beyond war so um, so again, yeah, okay, so there's nature. It ends up on the top of the deck, just as it did when you saw it sitting here, okay? And the silence card came out, um, which is number 19, which also correlates to the sun card in um, traditional tarot decks. So that's interesting, and I'm also seeing another um, one of the cards that came out during the pre-shuffle and that's pretty cool too because guess what number it is 23 so the top of the deck is nature the bottom of the deck is balance and this is another card that was showing in the pre-shuffle so balance is key that's what we're here to do. That's what I'm here to do is to help balance things on the planet with my background. Right behind balance mm -hmm. is water. And I was in the water industry uh, when I was an environmental scientist out in California. Okay. So I'm not going to go through all the cards, but I did want to see what came out. The co cooperation card, number 23, was also... Uh, along with this one in the pre-shuffle. So in order to get things balanced is going to take cooperation. But we can't have cooperation and we can't have uh, peace, right? If people keep shit starting conflicts, okay? And that's what I learned by supporting those who I was that that's pretty much what they've learned and been trained to go along with. But I was getting a strong indication and strong messages from the higher power to remove myself and my child from that energy and so I did. And um, it was not met well with those who wanted me and had expectations of me to stick around and just go along with them. But that's not what I wanted to do. That's not what my soul wanted to do, even as a water scientist, right? Because I was seeking enlightenment. So we have the water card and the enlightenment card along with the balance card, okay? And we, on, we live on a water planet and we must balance our emotions on the water planet. So this is not uh, far-fetched to remember uh, and, or become familiar with Mus Musaro Emoto's 
um, messages in water research, okay? And if you watch What the Bleep Do We Know, the extended version of, of that documentary slash movie, you will begin to see what I'm talking about and they'll begin to understand why those who wanted me or expected me to just go along with their war mens re mental state did not resonate with me because I was becoming enlightened about the game of war which is not good and it's not good for a planet and it's not good for nature okay so the other two cards that came out along with the balance and cooperation card cooperation card is like I said silence which is about meditating and you do that okay uh, along with opening up your and, and clearing your earth star chakra so there's a reason that this card came out um, bef just before I came on camera uh, to do this in the introduction to this position card number three dance celebration okay this is how you become more calm and balanced um, spending a lot of time on social media debating and arguing is not going to do it for you and then the other card that came out along with cooperation and silence is the great crystal and it kind of looks like this selenite doesn't it and I had mentioned in one of my previous readings I think it was one of my it's elemental my first it's elemental reading I do forget because I channel a lot and I talk about a lot of things but this is selenite and below Mexico Vera Cruz Mexico are uh, selenite prisms that are at least well as I talked about in the video that people can see in the audio message uh, of the same message you can't see what I'm saying but in the video I say uh, underneath Veracruz Mexico and other parts of Mexico I'm sure are men in firefighter suits or hazmat suits that are like this tall and the crystals uh, beneath the ground are like um, this tall right so if you put a man like here and the crystals the selenite crystals that are like this tall in the picture you know how tall are those crystals really right so um, I have already been speaking about the fact that we are shifting on this planet not only emotionally uh, through emotional maturity rather than centralized manipulated intelligence to promulgate and promote the myth of war uh, we are going to be evolving into more crystalline uh, 5D and above beings on this planet. Okay, it says here a vast quartz crystal of pure source energy graced the temple of Poseidon and created an intergalactic portal. It was also the central power generator, providing pure and safe energy. As the mainframe computer, for Atlantis, Crystal powered a high frequency internet service. The Great Crystal now lies in the center of the Bermuda Triangle. Now that part I cannot testify to yet because I haven't physically seen it, but I have seen pictures of the selenite crystals below the ground, below ground surface, BGS is the geologic term, of Mexico this uh, country of Mexico so ask yourself what is it about Mexico that is why is Mexico being so heavily controlled at the border of uh, the US and Mexico and also ask yourself why have the uh, 
you know, people of, you know, the dark-skinned people of uh, Central and South America, why have they been so uh, ravaged, including the Mayan culture, okay? So um, it's this indigenous tribal issue that I have already talked about in uh, my other reading called um, It's Elemental. So make sure you watch that. But here is another representation of the indigenous tribal spirit that is resonant with the planet, with nature, with the atmosphere, and with the ground beneath her. Okay? So that's what I'm getting at here. War is myth. War is uh, disastrous. From the stars, disastrous. And not in a good way, right? The star seeds that are here, including myself, are here to talk about this. But, you know, we're here to talk about it, to, to raise awareness about it and not promote it. But I didn't know when I was younger, I didn't know all the ins and outs, of course, because of the conditioning in my community in Utah and also, uh, you know, societal conditioning about, you know, you pay X amount of dollars to the federal government and you pay X amount of dollars to the state government for public services. And oh, by the way, a large majority of your money that's withheld each year goes toward the war machine. So, you know, things have to change. Our system needs to change. And it will, it will have to change. And it's, that's where we're at now. This, as I said, it's this, a fork in the road that we have to choose which way do you go and and that is pretty much what I had to do so so just remember when you uh, work with uh, clearing your chakras is uber important okay and earth star chakra is between you and the the ground the earth right and beneath the ground, you know, is uh, the energy grid of the earth. So you are able to cleanse and clear just as I'm able to cleanse and clear my crystals uh, after I do a session or I do a reading, right? So you can contact me if you would like uh, a crystal reading because I'm going to start doing those in April. And um, it's, it's helpful to understand this, uh, the connections, right? The earth connections. And I'll also be talking about Archangel Raphael and the earth force, uh, which I brought up. He's one of the archangels. He's the archangel of the West and he's also coming through this reading um, for position card number one which was fog veiled to talk about this earth force that is coming online and I'm part of that so and again that's to bring about balance and cooperation cooperation to bring about the balance so the more people that know that this is coming down the pike instead of more war then they have a choice it's like going to the grocery store do you want to keep choosing the food that has a bunch of preservatives in it and poison or do you and do you want to keep drinking that poison in that cup or in that bag do you want to keep eating that poison with you know different color dyes that cause, you know, uh, problems with your internal system, you know, just as alcohol and drugs do, or do you want to cleanse your body naturally 
and um, be more in balance with nature because that will help you become more cooperative and more resonant with others doing the same thing and therefore you will not resonate with those who are causing a lot of violence and noise and um, disturbing the peace and uh, preventing people ha from having peace and quiet enjoyment which is a legal term right so we can see how the peace is being disturbed right and that there are even justices of peace <laughs> and peace officers involved in ensuring that things are, you know, more chaotic and there's more mayhem. Okay, so who's, who's crazy? Who's imbalanced? The ones trying to bring about more peace and resonance with the planet or those who are promoting uh, brutality and violence against uh, innocent people regardless of skin color, regardless of uh, sexual orientation, regardless of sex, you know, the uh, type male or female or, or the other uh, genders that are being introduced uh, as part of gender confusion. So there's a lot of confusion is what I'm saying. And it's been planned and plotted. And that is what I was picking up on. Um, especially uh, before 9-11, but also increasingly so thereafter in my neck of the woods, quote unquote, but also obviously on television as uh, war became protracted for over more than a decade, which, you know, was another lie. It was only supposed to happen for a few months back in the 90s with uh, what was it operation desert shield okay lie upon lie so we have to come back into balance and we have to by doing that we have to back out of this habituation to lie and uh, manipulate and be sociopathic which leads to <clears throat> you know more lies and more manipulation and the gang stalking problems and the um, rape, I call it rape, rob, and pillaging uh, that, you know, was uh, proliferated along with the excuse to go to war in the Middle East. And you'll see where this is coming in more as I get into these angel cards and then the card with Mother Mary, Aquamarine. Um, the aqua marine, I just read it the other night, sorry. Aqua marine mantle. So, I think this is a good introduction. It's actually another hour long introduction, but I wanted to bring in this um, knowledge, more knowledge about Atlantis and this fork in the road. What do you choose? Of course, you'll have a choice. Um, and, you know, I suggest you don't take the easy way out. I suggest that you go toward taking these steps toward enlightenment, okay? Because that is where real security, <coughs> excuse me, real security is. <clears throat> and when you do that, you'll learn of the levels. <clears throat> and with each of the levels, each of the steps, you'll gain more knowledge and more support <clears throat> from the higher realms, just as I have. The more I distance myself from the lies and the liars, the safer I became. Okay. So the balance card I did want to read, um, it's number 29, which adds up to an 11. In the golden days of Atlantis, people never gave without receiving, nor received without giving. This meant that no karma accrued, and the balance, there's the, 
the balance. Okay. Where's the balance card? Oh, I am reading the balance card. Sorry. I was thinking the cooperation card. So that takes cooperation, right? To give and receive in equal measure is cooperating. It's almost like the barter system. So we might need to go to a barter system if, you know, this whole Bitcoin um, thing falls through along with bricks. <clears throat> I know my son and I had to do more of that type of bartering when we were raped, robbed, well, I can't say raped, but robbed and pillaged. We were financially raped in California um, because we were going against, or we, we were just essentially divorcing this dark force that we didn't want to be part of. So when there's an equal give and take, essentially there is no karma accrued and the balance sheets of life in the uh, times of Atlantis, the golden age, were kept clear. Everything was fair, so the citizens enjoyed a sense of justice. So there's the word justice along with balance, which I just spoke about, environmental justice too. And also well-being, which is health, right? And we know that many people's health is suffering because of the lies and manipulation in uh, the medical system. Um, not just in America. In the Halkyon days, the healer priests were able to keep inhabitants in optimum health and vitality. Vital. It's like your vital organs. All right. Vitality. Vital. It's vital that you seek uh, balance for your vitality. Simply doing so by aligning people's chakras. Okay, so before I even realized this Atlantean connection to the level that I have, I intrinsically knew, even back in the 90s, early 90s, to start balancing my chakras. And I also sought out places that helped me feel good where I traveled to, and that included Hawaii, and when I was in Hawaii, I learned of places where there are energy portals. So I was learning this stuff on the fly as an environmental scientist, both professionally, but also in my personal life when I was seeking respite as things got more challenging in my neck of the woods, okay? Um, in the West Western United States. So this balance card reminds me and you that your guidance is to find equilibrium in every area of your life. Make sure you give and receive equally and also keep your work and play in balance. And I had everything in balance until I let certain people back into my life and they were connected to the war machine, okay? So I, I'm definitely speaking from experience. To keep your chakras in balance then, you must breathe deeply into any part of your body that feels tense or low in energy. So this card is to remind you to balance every area of your life and that's what I've been teaching even on my Science Spirituality University.com website that I've since taken down. But if you're interested in any of those um, blog posts, I can certainly send them to you in a, I call it an environmental report. It's just a different way of reporting about environment and, you know, being, being, learning to be one with your environment. Okay, and remember behind the balance card was the water card. And so I was a water scientist out there and things were becoming very imbalanced in California in the early part of the second 
decade of the 21st century and that's when I knew that there was something was seriously wrong and we can see that that's happened things have gotten worse so here's the pur purification the word purification and you'll see that on um, one of the magical herb oracle cards I think it's the bottom of the deck card so I, I hope I remember to show you the bottom of the deck cards as well because this is still uh, a long reading for the extended. This says here, the citizens of Golden Atlantis were aware that water washes, hydrates, and is a cosmic cleanser, which purifies people at a cellular level. They knew that flowing water soothes emotions, which I knew intrinsically too by getting several water fountains, as I've said, around 9-11 and then also on my desk in the water department when I was a paid state scientist in California because things were not copacetic on quote unquote the inside uh, of the state government by you know during the mid 2000s onward and that I was also picking up on so here it says in Atlantis, they knew flowing water soothes emotions, opens up spiritual and psychic potential, and is a force that can be harnessed to change situations. So they placed fountains in every temple and swam in rivers <coughs> or picnicked by lakes whenever possible. Most of all, they liked to sit and contemplate where they could hear the sound of running water. So it's not coincidental that I was prompted to get a water fountain a few months ago and start doing these Earth is Magical readings. So for purification, it says, your guidance is to spend time today near water, preferably by a river, a lake, or the sea, or in a bath or shower. As you immerse yourself in the cosmic energy of water, sense it purifying each cell of your body. If you cannot physically be in or near water, then visualize it. So this is helping you also, this water fountain with the, with the water lily and the little frog. There's a little frog down there. Also, he's hanging out down below the water lily. So this card says, Use water for deep inner and outer cleansing. Okay. So the goal is to balance our emotions on in the water bodies that we are, because our bodies comprise mainly of water. And that will help also balance uh, and harmonize your um, inner well-being so that when you go out in the environment which is kind of volatile right now and a lot of people are angry this will help you uh, regain and maintain some balance internal balance okay and that will help you and those around you become more cooperative cooperation not black operation or dark operation or um, sinister operations <laughs> okay where our tax dollars are disappearing too also um, you know balancing your chakras <clears throat> by sitting on um, you know a piece of the earth a piece of land um, near a tree, by a lake, by a river, you know. It doesn't take much to balance yourself. It takes a whole lot more energy to muster up anger and, um, you know, cause destructive things to happen. It takes a whole lot of energy for that. It doesn't take a lot of energy to sit and enjoy nature, right? And by doing so, you will tap in 
to the crystalline grid. Okay, so I'm talking about water. I'm talking about crystals. I'm also talking about balance, cooperation, and silence. And this will bring you closer to enlightenment, which will help you traverse these steps and, and head toward the light, right? And when you do this, you will feel more like a light body. Your body will feel lighter and um, enlivened. And that will help you become more resonant with all things around you, including the animals, the plants, the sky. And it will actually help you ensure that you spend time uh, enjoying nature and wanting to protect that which helps you feel at peace. Okay, so I'm going to set these to the side here. So I think I'm going to um, call this the uh, part one. <laughs> That's a pretty good part one. And now I'm going to get into each of these specific cards. Um, know that in the Atlantis deck here, when I talked about the intergalactic connection. Let's see if I can find it. Yes, okay. It was the great crystal. Okay, so there's a reason that Spirit wanted me to show this card too. Okay, and this is another one. Just got a little bit wet from the fountain. From Diana Cooper's Ascension Deck. Accelerate your journey to the light. And these are crystals, right? Tall crystals. But she talks about the intergalactic portals. Okay, and... Um, connection to a vast quartz crystal of pure source energy um, that aids in accessing this portal, if you will. So also understand there are specific masters associated with the intergalactic council. And I know this may sound far-fetched, but more and more people are able to tune in and channel many of these ascended masters and I'm able to do some more as well and that's part of my elevation in fact I'm being elevated now into the the next level because I've done you know I've pretty much graduated I have a little candle back here with a graduation hat but um, I've pretty much graduated and done what spirit was guiding me to do uh, in 3d and also to commune with 5d and um, my Science Spirituality Universe City website kind of looked cosmic like this, you know, and some people would say, well, you know, it's not going to be very popular because it needs to look like this more cookie cutter uh, version of a website, which is more business like, but that's more 3D, right? So I've switched to more of the 3D look with my science spirituality universe city dot info website for now but understand that my initial website with the dot com uh, 
was more along these lines with the cosmic look. And there was a young man at the edge of a cliff with a backpack on, looking down on this waterfall, almost like uh, <clears throat> Niagara Falls, if you will. So, you know, this is how spirit was guiding me to communicate about chakras, the importance of chakras, and um, setting intention in the positive so that you can move forward on this ascension journey, essentially. So if anyone's interested in it, I call it my environmental report. And I also have an environmental society quiz, uh, which is the quiz that will help animals to hashtag help animals to. So do be sure to contact me by email if you're interested and you can you can go to the science spirituality universe city dot info website to contact me there but i do want to read this r real quickly okay don't underestimate yourself every thought word and action radiates an energy that affects others and draws situations and people to you, which is essentially the law of attraction. So make sure that your aims are for the highest good and then great currents of energy will emanate to help you and enable you to become a power generator to actually help the world. So this great crystal card along with these intergalactic council ascended masters are here to help you to ascend and then use the power that you earn right through graduating for the highest good not for ulterior motives not to facilitate the cabal not to promote dark operations on the planet or war essentially Okay, and so I'm just going to read uh, this Intergalactic Council card next, along with having you look at this, that understand that this happens in cycles, planetary cycles, as we enter through portals and achieve these raises, um, if you will, energetic raises, not monetary raises in your frequency so that you do become uh, more enlightened and then you're able to turn around and help others. So the Intergalactic Council of 12 great masters makes decisions for the highest good of this universe. The council includes the masters Marco, Hilarion, who I'm working with, Jesus, Ashtar, Kachumi, El Moira, Paul the Venetian, Saint Germain, just associated with the twin flame, violet flame, Kuan Yin, who I've talked about, Lady Nada, who I actually forgot is the higher self. Uh, I knew that Mary Magdalene was Lady Nada, but I forgot the name when I was channeling in I think one of the earlier parts of this reading or one of my more recent readings but again Lady Nada is the higher self of Mary Magdalene after she passed on Serapis Bay of Egypt and Lord Maitreya saying or thinking their names raises their frequent or your frequency Recognize, too, as you do so, that you're a multi-dimensional, okay? It's more than just 3D now. You're going to accelerate into 4D and above. <clears throat> when you set the intention to, you know, clear and cleanse your chakras and become more um, evolved, more in tune with nature and the planet and the galaxy. So uh, connect with your deepest wisdom 
and focus on the well-being of the universe. Your guidance is to ask Universal Angel Butylil but but to take you to the Intergalactic Council when you meditate or sleep and offer to serve the universe. So, you know, again, it sounds like far-fetched until these beings start contacting you or you start astrally traveling and realizing you're traveling in your dreams anyway, so you might as well spend it wisely, spend the energy wisely, because I guarantee you, as I've learned, there are dark entities that are also trying to get your attention and get your energy when you sleep. So you might as well protect yourself and get their protection. And you'll see the security card that I showed in the introduction for this particular part of the reading card, position number three, um, about security. This will greatly expand your consciousness when you offer to be of service, okay? So when you go to sleep at night, talk, talk to God, talk to the higher power, call on one of these masters that you resonate with most. And I'll leave this card up here for just a minute if you want to write down any of their names. This is the number 29, which adds up to an 11, and that will help you on your journey. You know, when you look at tarot, the two of wands is essentially like the number 11, which is, uh, you know, this passion within you to uh, learn more. And the, the man on the Two of Wands card is holding the globe, the earth in his hand, and he's got a staff or a wand in his other hand, left hand, I believe. And he's looking out over the ocean, over the water. Okay, and what did we just talk about with the water? and nature, you know, finding solace, finding peace, finding the peace within as you ask for intergalactic guidance and security. Because I can tell you, those I was around who were promoting quote unquote national security were not about uh, making sure I was secure. And, you know, when if that ever comes out, in a court of law, justly, people will begin to see just how this whole national security thing is a big farce. Okay, so I'm going to quit this particular part of the reading, and I'm going to call it part number one for position card number three, okay? I'm going to come back and start with this card, which is one of the Angels of Atlantis cards, of course, Archangel Sandalphon is here to help guide us about these cycles that we're going through astronomically and astrologically. Namaste. I will be right back. <laughs> 